Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're looking at very, very obvious my 13 kilo overhead angled bar spinner. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff that we need to do on very, very obvious. We haven't really seen this guy for a while, uh, but we've got fights coming up really quite soon. So we're going to make some changes. First of all, uh, the whole robot was underweight by about a kilo, so I'm going to put some of that back into the blade. Also, I want to change up the paint job a little bit and maybe change up the drive system. I don't know about that yet. Uh, I've got a couple of weeks from my standing until the fights happen. Uh, so if I can get a new set of uh, drive systems in, I will. If I can't, then we'll stick with the drill drives. Uh, but because there is so much to do, let's uh, get started, rip this thing down, sand off some paint and start all over again with a brand new paint job. We're going to keep the same colors, but I just want to go a little bit more subtle with uh, the paint job that we've got going on. So let's get going. Ugh, so much masking. But it's so worth it. So now that that is done, it is time to start looking at the drive and I've already kind of temporarily bolted the uh, drive motors back in here because we are going to go back with the drills. I now have like less than a week to get this thing back together again uh, and I could not get the brushless motors I wanted in this thing to actually fit inside of the chassis. So if I ever want this thing on brushless motors, it will need to be either different brushless motors than the ones I wanted in here or it will need a brand new chassis, uh, which is an expensive little venture and also time consuming. So we're not doing that. Uh, so instead we are going to look at how we mount the wheels to the drill drives. Cause last year we used HDPE hexagons that had the thread for the drill tapped into them. And that worked okay ish kind of, but uh, the threads stripped out of them pretty easily. So this year we're going to look at either three mil aluminium or actual nuts that sit, uh, that are the exact right size for the drills. However, they are too thick, so I'd need to cut those in half. Uh, and also, I would need a 3D printed hex hub that goes from this hex size, if I can get this thing back off again, that hex size up to the actual hex size that we need. So, first of all, I think I'm gonna try the aluminium uh, plates, see if we can tap some of this, get this into the right shape, tap some of that, and give it a try. Uh, I am starting to run out of time for this build, so the next thing you might see is just this drive system actually in the robot and potentially just pushing the thing around because, yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna have time to film the actual turning of these little plates into the pieces that I need. So anyway, moving on to the drive. Cool, nailed it in one shot. Uh, so sorry that if that footage was a little bit uh, off colored, uh, it was filmed in a hallway that has a kind of sunken section in it, which means that I can stand up off the actual ground that the combat robot's running on. So if it runs away, it's not gonna run into my feet and uh, do some damage. So I always like to try and test things in the safest way I can. Uh, so. Yeah, and that place doesn't really have the best lighting. Anyway, uh, moving on. So this is the wheel design that I've come up with. In the back here, we have uh, some hex-ish shaped aluminium that has a uh, drilled and tapped hole in the middle of it, which then threads onto the actual um, drill motor that I'm using. And then on the other side, we just have a big washer, which is being held in place with all of the bolts and also has a spot to allow the reverse thread screw to go through to lock the whole wheel in place. And that worked pretty well. Uh, I was expecting that if it wasn't gonna work, I would have some issues with something bending or with these threads stripping out, but everything seems to have gone pretty well. So we're gonna move on. I have another option for these and I've kind of sort of worked on it a little bit, but uh, I'm really, really running out of time now, so we're just gonna stick with the thing that we know will work. That test wasn't long, uh, but it was definitely a lot better than last year. Last year with the HDPE uh, hex hubs in here with the tap in the HDPE, it would not have been able to push around 
that bot, especially not sideways like it did with the extra weight of the old weapon bars on it. So that was good. Anyway, next thing up is switches. And I have a variety here in front of me. Now, I often use links in my designs. However, I've been told by the safety team this year that I'm not allowed to, or they've put in the new rule that you're not allowed to put your hand anywhere near your weapon uh, to activate your robot, which precludes me from having a link anywhere on my robot because I would need to reach through the path of the weapon to install the link. Uh, so that's just out of the question. So uh, I've talked to the safety team and they have okayed me using a switch of some form that I then use a long tool to activate. So the tool goes through the path of the weapon, but not my hand, which is probably actually a good thing, especially considering that we have a heavier weapon on this year. So in front of me, I've got three different options. This is a car push button. And as you can see at the moment, it's actually not a switch, it's a push button, but we'll get to that in a second. This thing is about 50 amps or rated for about 50 amps at 12 volts. I'm gonna be running on 4S, so the voltage isn't quite enough and also 50 amps it's a little bit low. My weapon is going to draw that all on its own. The next up here is a uh, boat switch and it is rated for 200 amps and it is actually a switch. So there is a little switchy mechanism on the top here, which I guess I could rely on. Um, but also I would need to develop some form of tool that flicks this little lever here and um, yeah, I'm not too comfortable relying on this because it is literally just uh, spring pressure and a little like click or plastic click in there. So there's nothing stopping that from taking a big hit and uh, coming out and turning off. So anything that we do here, we're gonna have to modify to actually make a switch that will work. And then the final one here is a battery isolation switch. From memory, these things are rated up to something crazy like 500 amps, um, but it's also a key system. So when it's off, there is no key in it, and when it's on, there is a key in it. However, uh, both of these guys, well actually all three of these, we can modify in the same way. So inside each of these, they are basically the same. There is contacts that lead down to these screws at the bottom, and then there's a plate that moves up and down. So in this guy, that plate is literally just attached, or the, the button is literally just attached to that plate. So when you push down, oh, that's the other thing, there's a spring pointing up. So you've got a plate coming down this way and a spring pointing up. And as you push down against the spring, the plate comes into contact with these down here and everything turns on. And it's the same with these. It's just, they've got a complicated plastic mechanism at the top. That means when you turn, the plate pushes down and stays down. That's it. That's literally all there is to this system. Um, so, for all of these, we can do the same thing. We can remove the top, remove the system. In actual fact, I can do that right now. I can take this little spring apart here. There you go. That's the plate I was talking about. There are some springs down in there. And yeah, this just pushes down against those springs. So all we need to do is remove the top section from any one of these, attach a 3D print with a captive nut and a screw, and the screw will then be the thing that pushes down and it will hold against the captive nut and mean that when you screw it down, it will stay and hold in place, just like that. Uh, so that's the theory anyway. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for the 200 amp option. It is slightly smaller in footprint than this big, big um, 500 amp battery isolator switch. And I think I can just get this to work a little bit better and a little bit faster. So that's the one we're gonna go for. Uh, so the first thing to do is to take this whole thing apart and attach a 3D print to the top of it. And done. So here we go. This is now uh, basically together. There is the switch in underneath that's held to this top plate with uh, two M4 screws. And then there is an M5 screw here, which you tighten down to activate the screw or to activate the switch. Uh, so that works out well. And as you can see, I have a really long handled screwdriver so I can have my hands well up and away from the blade to activate the switch, which is perfect. So the final thing to do for this video is covering. So in here you can see I have these holes in the chassis. These are weight saving holes, or well, they are mostly weight saving holes, but they've been useful for stuff like having switches through. Uh, but last year, what we did is we had these clear plastic covers over top of them. These are Lexan, uh, which was okay until it got hit by a saw, but also you can see all of my messy wiring inside there, which I'm not 
overly thrilled about, to be perfectly honest. So this year we're going to have uh, the Lexan on the switch side, but also black HDPE panels on the inside in underneath both of them. So you can't see any of the stuff going on inside and you keeps the uh, clean outside look that we've got for the rest of the robot. Okay, um, once again, I'm probably gonna do this really quickly and off camera, but that's where we're going. Okay, and there we go, upgrades complete. Uh, we have the screw switch installed in this thing. We have the covers mounted. Uh, all I need to do now is actually go through and wire up that screw switch and add an LED uh, to indicate when the robot is turned on. Other than that, we are good to go. New weapons, uh, new improved drive system, new switch system. Hopefully that fixes some of the issues that I faced with this thing in America and Australia last year and we can have a bit of a better showing with it. The other thing too, is that there is now a tip speed limit in the Australian competition. And because of that, I'm gonna run the whole robot just on 4S. Originally, or last year I ran it on 4S and 6S, uh, but yeah, this year we can't do that because the tip speed limit means that we would be over speed. Uh, so I'm just gonna do the easy thing and just run the whole robot on 4S and just make my life so much simpler. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this one has been rather quick. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video. Mm-hmm.